Dr. Cannon and I am here with our team builder for the new week 4 battle of the PASL. And yeah, before we start that, I have to talk about why this is the week 4 battle. And this is because the PASL just pretty much broke together because some people left, some weren't just weren't responding to everything, uh, to, to different people, just didn't communicate at all with us. So the PASL uh, is still there, just with less teams. So we were 10 teams, we are now only 6 teams and we are not divided into divisions anymore. We are just playing, though everyone is playing everyone two times after 10 weeks. The first four teams are going to play off, and yeah, that's it. So, actually, the battles that were done between the people that are still in it um, are counted, and the ones with the people that are not in it got uh, uh, they got sorted out. So that's why the Renegade Pyros have of the they originally had four battles done. They now only have two battles done, which is against the Buzan Park Azumarill and the LA Lucarios, and the battles against the Toronto Typhlosions and the Bombay Bishops, which are out. Sadly, oh, they still get done. And no, <laughs> they don't still get done. They got sorted out because we don't we don't get anything of that of those wins. We don't get the win. We don't get the differential, we don't get the kills for our Pokemon, uh, we don't get anything from that. But we still have the other two wins, which we can build up on, and this is where we have our week 4 battle, um, because this is a bit, little bit weird because of the schedule I had to make now, so that's why it's all a bit strange, but actually this is going to be our week 4 battle, and the next battle we have, which is probably be to be in two weeks is our week three battle then. It's a bit confusing, but um, at the very least we get our battles then, and we the, the league can still go on, which is the most important thing. And I'm very thankful to all of those who are still in it and still want to carry on. And yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Now we can get into our team building. As you may see, we finally decided to bring Starscream again, the Mega Metagross. This time, again with 4 attacks, with coverage, Bullet Punch, Earthquake, Thunder Punch and Hammer Arm. And as you see, this spread is so that I can outspeed different things with that. Um, this is the spread so that I can outspeed Nidoking King 100%. And yeah, I don't I don't outspeed Mew, but it's okay. I would have have I would have had to pack too many EVs into that speed, and I didn't want that. If it's no speed investment Mew, I think I'm faster. Not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. And we pretty much outspeed anything apart from Jolteon and Max Speed Drapion and of course Cryogonal, but I really don't see him bringing that. But of course, I, I also don't outspeed the Mega Gardevoir. But we don't need to speak outspeed Cryogonal or Mega Gardevoir because Bullet Punch with this Brand 252 Adamant one shots Mega Gun. Typical Mega Gardevoir. If it has a lot of HP investment, it, don't, it doesn't. But Cryogonal and Mega Gardevoir will probably get Oko'd by Bullet Punch, so we don't need to think about outspeeding them. We just kill them. Which is pretty awesome. And yeah, we have the Earthquake, of course, for nice coverage against Nidoking and Jolteon, who get one shot by that. Drapion doesn't get one shot, but it does some pretty good damage to that, so that Bullet Punch can clean up after that. Yeah, we have the Thunder Punch to hit Politoed, super effective, and also Skarmory. I think, uh, yeah, Politoed gets Oko'd. 100% if it's if it has no HP or defense investments, no. So 
I don't expect. He could bring the polish out, it would actually be a pretty good play, I think, because Mecha's one point puts in a lot of work against my team. And if you can get get the rain set up instantly, this would be pretty cool. And you, you see you see his team here. Mega Gardevoir, Muse Gummery, Mega Swamp, Blizzy, Nido King, Jolteon, Scrafty, Drapion, Dustlops, Crayon, you know, Polish out, I read it out. Again, so, I, of course, the Thunder Punch doesn't do too much to Scummery, but at least, but it, it, it at least does something. And actually, I don't think Scummery can do anything to me back. I mean, he can whittle me down, of course. But yeah, I, I don't have a huge problem with Scummery, I think. Because, of course, I have other ones to handle that. Mm. This battle's actually, I think his team is honestly pretty good against mine. I, I do not have things like in, in other battles where I can put a coverage move on everything and don't have to worry about it because I need to pack so many different coverage moves in the different ones. So, this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, the hammer arm actually occurs a Blissey with bold defense investments and bold, but no HP investments. Which I know my my enemy, which is uh, the coach of the Gozma Golems, Mighty Carp, which is of course a friend of mine. So I I know he does like to run Blissey with full defense and full special defense investment. So I know I can oco that with a Hammer Arm, which is pretty good. And Hammer Arm does I think oco. A full offensive Scrafty with like no HP investments as well. So if he wants to run like a fast Dragon Dance variant, this gets Oko for Hammer Arm. Diagonal of course too, but that really doesn't matter. Mm, I can't do too much to a Mew with that. To a Mega Swampert, I can as well. I, I was debating if I should pack the Grass Knot for the Mega Swampert or if I should pack the Thunder Punch for the Scum. I mean, both both things hit the Politoed decently well, but at the end, I thought Thunder Punch took so that I can do something at least to Scummery. I'm still not 100% convinced with that because Sw Mega Swampert is of course a huge problem, and I do not have very many things to switch into a hit from him. So I'm not 100% sure yet. If this maybe gets changed, I need to watch my calcs once again because now that I look on that, I'm I'm debating on not having something for Skarmory, but much rather having something to hit Mega Swampert because I can switch in things on Skarmory no problem. But on Mega Swampert, that's a problem. So I think I'll change this, but I'll need to watch my calcs first. So I'll in the battle, I'll tell you if I did that. Otherwise, yeah, this is a man who, of course, does a lot, a lot of things to different mods. Uh, Dusclops get the completely lost this thing. But that's okay. I'm not really fearing the Dusclops that much because I don't see much he can do back to me. He can just stall me out. But I, I have things to knock him off. I also you'll see later that I'm going to Hazard tank, so I. I Try to get that thing toxic so that it can stay in uh, like endlessly. And yeah, I'm, I think I can handle the dust clubs with other mods very well. So let's go on to the next one, which is actually Barney. Once again, I'm bringing it because it, Gudra is just too good. Of course, the assault there is pretty obvious, but it works. And you see, I'm a physical Gudra now. You also see. Uh, the this speed investment here in yeah, 172 uh, 176 and jolly nature is that I can outspeed a normal God of War before Mega Evolving 100% and that means this thing is in and he brings in God of War because he predicts like a dragon move or something or uh, Something of him dies, and he bring he then brings in the God of War to Mega Evolve. I hit him with air, Iron Tail before he can do anything to me, and this thing is dead. I think there's like a two percent chance or something that God of War doesn't die, but I actually I'll take that chance. I I also don't get O-Code by a Hyper Voice, 
think I'm living with like at least 10%. So 252 attack investment and the rest in HP just be tanky. And I thought about what different, what, what abilities I could bring, but I saw no reason to put something into to 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 go for the sap zipper because he has no I don't think he has any way of running a grass type move apart from HP grass or Mew. Okay Mew of course can have some but I don't see him using that. There are better moves he could use on you just because of my powder and I don't really see that. Um so and also GUI I don't see a lot of mods who really touch me directly, like Skarmory, but <laughs> I don't care about Skarmory, I really don't care that much about Skarmory. And Mega Swampert could Ice Punch me, yeah, it's so uh, like as me anyways, and if it rains up it's fast anyways, so don't see that. I also, yeah, maybe a Little King with an Ice Punch, but I'm faster than this anyways if it's not Scarf and I know that he doesn't like to run Middle King Scarf. He likes to run his expert belt. And yeah, so I I am faster than this. Still you see I have nothing to hit Middle King anyway, so Yeah. Yeah you see I, I don't see a reason to, to take a Wii. So that I decided to have hydration because if he has his Mega Swamp Pad on or the Polytone or the Blissey can set up rain as well. And if then somehow I get poison paralyzed burn, I don't know. And the rain is going to heal me. Which is extremely good for me. And yeah, you see my set? Power Whip for Mega Swamp Heart. Um and for Polytone as well. These are the two things I want to hit with that Iron Tail, of course, for the Mega Gardevoir. Hits Cryogonal very hard as well. And we have the then, then we have the two great moves here. We have Focus Punch. Because Superpower does not kill a Blissey. Focus Punch doesn't too, but Focus Punch 100% puts Blissey in range of a Power Whip to kill it. But Superpower doesn't, and it also gets my attack lowered. And I can use Focus Punch if I predict a switch. I will 100% click Focus Punch if Blissey is in front of me. Because Blissey can use a move, but it pretty much knows that it doesn't do too much to me with that. Like the only thing he can really hurt me with is Seismic Toss. So I would much rather predict him to, if he has the Blissey in, go for a Rain Dance for his Swamp Pot. Go for Stealth Rocks. Go for, I know he likes to run confusion stuff, so go for a sweet kiss on me. And that's why th those things don't hit me. Of course, he can hit the sweet kiss and then I get confused, but that's RNG. I don't prepare for RNG. So I think that could be pretty good. And the last move is Dragon Tail. To face someone's out, to spam that move the whole time, to do damage to it, to switch it onto rocks again and again. I know he doesn't like to bring the Cryogonal, he didn't bring it, I don't think he's comfortable with that one. So I also know that he don't he doesn't like Defog on his Mew because he likes he more so likes the offensive type of Mew and Yeah. Then he has the problem with his Garmory. And mm, I know that he, he did pack Defog on Skarmory. But there's also weeks where he, or, or battles where he, he said that he didn't have a slot for the for the defog because he, of course, he wants to bring roost. He wants to bring maybe rocks or spikes, and then uh, moves to hit other mons as well, like one or two attacking moves. Maybe pack the taunt. So maybe he doesn't bring a defog. Up. And that's where, why I decided to bring Hazard Stack. So, you see those moves, I don't have to talk much more about Barney. I do now talk about these two Hazard Mons here.
we have Madness the Hippowdon with the Sandstream. 6% damage every turn is very good. I also can get the Rain away if this is a problem. I have the leftovers. I do not get to it KO'd by too many mons. I, I, I help that Mega God of War does has like a 10% chance to do it KO me with the Hyper Voice when I'm at full HP. And I can start the thing out. I have Stealth Rock and War. I want to get the Stealth Rock up. And I want to phase him out again and again and again. I want to whittle him down. That's the plan. Earthquake, of course. Because Earthquake is a team. Pretty good. Does, of course, do some good damage to Mega God of War. Uh, to Nidoking, King, to Jolteon, to Drapion. Everything else, it hits pretty hard as well. Well, apart from like Skarmory and Cryogono, but still, it, it is okay. And then I have the Slack of course to get health back. I don't need coverage on that anymore. Yeah. You see, especially defensive with a careful nature. Yeah, I mean, it takes physical hits very well anyways, so I need to, I need to let it take. Uh, special hits very well too, so that's why I have that spread. And uh, almost nothing can do it KO it. I think a fully physically offensive Nidoking King Adamant with Ice Punch and Expert Belt and Sheer Force can do it KO me. So that's that. If it is specially offensive with Ice Beam, it's, it, it can't, even if it's modest, it cannot do it KO me. So, I mean, Specs Mew, which I know he likes to run with a uh, super effective move, can be very hard hitting, but if I see him hitting that hard, I know that it's Specs and I can then um, do something against it, because of course, I do have two Assault Best Moms, one you saw already, and I have the Tenor Crew, which is pretty good. On the special side, on the defensive, on the special defensive side, so I can take hits very well. I'd actually not bring an assault blast attack crew this time though, because of course I also want to have even more hazards for the toxic spikes. Those are huge for the dust clubs, but I mean, I have other ways to handle dust clubs, but it it, uh, it would be way harder if I can't toxic that dust clubs. Of course, he has the drapion which can get rid of those toxic spikes, but if I know that, I try to get around that. So I need... When I see the Drapion, if I, if I see the Drapion, I know I have to get rid of that first, and I know I can somehow do it to bring... In. Okay, I can somehow bring him to bring that thing in, and then I need to kill it with, that, with something. I, I have enough coverage for that. But if that thing is away, I can go for the toxic spikes and whittle some things down. Of course, the Nido King is as well very good with, with getting away toxic spikes. But still, I can get around that. Toxic on the Mew would be great on the on, on, on everything like Blissey as well, even though it can switch out. But then, if in the next time it switches back in, it, it gets toxic again. Of course, I have the Rapid Spin to get my, uh, his stealth rocks and spikes that he can set up away. And toxic spikes as well if he wants to, so I don't want to have none of that, but still, what well, toxic spikes has been away if, if I'm a uh, person type would be not that great. So I have Scald, of course, to burn stuff and knock off to get some critical items away. Um, of course, the EV light of the Dust Clubs is the first priority, and then like the specs on you or something would be pretty good. And yeah, then of course, I do have the Black Sludge to get some health back. As you see, I'm physically defensive so I can I think I have the possibility to lift two psychics slash psyshocks both of them like you see bold and yeah I also have the force B just to maybe so that I don't have to win a speed tie with for example Mew if he has Mew and doesn't have speed investments maybe he does bring in other an, another set this time you, you never know and yeah, then I do not have to risk a speed time if he doesn't have any speed investments. I'm faster, I can knock that thing off. If I even want to say, you know, that that's another cost. But yeah, you see my my ability, Liquid Ooze, he has not very much to, to, uh, 
to to suck health with like yeah he can have drain punch he's crafty but he wouldn't go for it on, on anyways that's like the only thing so um that's really don't need that clear body I don't see much use for that and rain so so I I took rain dish just because if he sets up the rain I have more recovery which is good so yeah now uh, that's those two those are my two walls and my hazard setups so I I am pretty interested in if this works of course it's risky because he has two things to get rid of twenty six bikes I but I, I actually I just want to try that out because this is not what I do normally and I, I want to try it out and let's go on to the next one which is grip he's actually a very interesting set assault vest of course with levitate and then these four moves iron tail knock off thunderbolt and grass knot with 252 attack investments and special attack investments and uh, with a brave nature because I'm slow anyways I don't care if I'm slower so I hit very hard with this thing I have the iron tail to kill the god of war I have the knock off to, to I think I can almost do it KO me. I think with knockoff plus thunderbolt I can do it KO or something. I'm pretty sure. But even if not, I can get a, an item away of him. Uh, thunderbolt, um, of course, does not all cause Gumry if it's sturdy, but if it's not sturdy and physically defensive, thunderbolt all cause that. Grass not all cause the max swarm part. It does not all cause the polytone, but it does some good damage to it. Two it KOs it. Um, yeah, then what do we have else? Yeah, that's uh, gra uh, of course the knockoff for the dust clubs. That is pretty good. And yeah, Iron Tail does also go cryogonal. So, of course, he has some stuff like Jolteon and Nidoking, but still, if I can their item, if I can knock off their item if they switch in, that is great as well. So, this thing is just a hard hit up on both sides, so. I wanted to get the best coverage and the best coverage moves of those different types just were two different forms of attacks. So physical and special and that's why I decided on this bread and I I'm pretty sure this will work. We will see though. We will see later. So and the last one we have is Zeke the Victini with an expert belt. Nothing too crazy here. 252 special attack and 252 speed with a hasty nature because I don't wanna get rid of those attack stats with the weak create and the U turn. Yeah. Of course, this speed is so that I speed tie with Timid Mew and Timid Mephagardevoir. And if they are not timid, they get killed. I mean, though they, they don't get killed, but they get out of bed, of course. And yeah, this is why I have that spread. Jolteon still faster of course but I cannot do anything about that then I had to be scarfed and then I couldn't switch up my moves and that would be pretty bad because you have Blissey and Swampert and stuff that would not be very good so that's why I have that uh, so I'm, I'm still faster than anything besides Cryogonal and Jolteon and Mega Swampert in the rain so that's good energy ball of course hit the Mega Swamp to occur the Mega Swampert and Hollytoad gets to it KO'd if it's like specially defensive if it's not anything then it gets Code. So that's great. We have the blue flare for Skarmory. If it's not sturdy because he wants to have stealth rocks, then. Oh, wait a second. No, can he can he use stealth rocks if he's sturdy? No, he can't use defog if he's sturdy, I think. That's what it is. I very much think so, but I'm not sure. I uh, need to look that up before we get into the battle, actually. So still blue flares and Oko on that of course. Um also Oko's cryogonal. Usion is for switch advantage, also it's super effective on the Mew. Uh, which is very good. And V create is so that I can hit the Blissey. Blissey gets to it KO by this V create, which is good. Which is very good. And also I can hit 
if I see something especially defensive, I can still hit it hard with a B-Create. I think B-Create hits the on harder than the Blue Flare as well. And yeah. No, not very much more to say about that. This is the team I have. I know it's a bit different from what, from what I ran before. It's a bit more all over the place, I would say. It's not that straight up as my other teams are, like I'll call that, I'll call that, to it, KO that, and take all the hits. But that also is because this team is very good against mine. And I am not that confident as in other battles. Pretty much like against the Abusement Park Azumara, which also I was I was very fearful. And still, I think we can win that battle if I play it correctly, if I know what my win conditions are. I need to get up the stealth rocks, phase them out. If there, there are no ways to get rid of the toxic weapons as well, then I can set these up. I need to knock off items. And then, if things are whittled really down, the hard hitters come in and hit everything that is. And we have hard hitters, we have four hard hitters, and those don't have the best coverage for everyone, but they have such strong stance that if the mods get phased out multiple times, they can just kill them. And I'm not playing on differential this time, I want to play to win. And this is what we do. And I hope. Stay tuned for the battle that comes after this team builder thing, because I think this is going to be pretty interesting. I'm really curious what he brings, and yeah, um, it's going to be great, so stay tuned for that. Hey guys, I am back, and I am just talking to Mighty Cop so we can get our battle ready. Oh, his, his team is illegal. Okay. So he he's he is he is having to change his team right now. Uh, then I can say something about my team. So I actually changed the names of those because this is like a, a little insider. You don't have to understand that. I just thought it was funny. So next time they all gonna have their normal names back. So. I don't feel that, so I actually changed something on my Metagross. I did get rid of the Thunder Punch and put Grass Knot in there. Did give it 48 special attack EVs, so that it can Oko and not specially defensive Mega Swamp. But if it has 252 HP investments, I can still Oko that with the Grass Knot. <laughs> after, after rocks. I still have a chance to knock it out, I think it's like 80% to knock it out. Uh, without stealth rocks, but with stealth rocks, it 100% knocks it out with the grass knot. That's why I have that, so I don't have the adamant nature. I have lonely nature, shouldn't be that big of a problem. So I'll actually have to talk to him if his team is gonna be legal. So I'll be back when this is ready. So, we are actually back here with his challenge, and we'll just get right into the battle. So, we see he did actually bring the Politoad and the Mega Swamper. And, uh, I, I pretty much expected that. And um, yeah, <laughs> he knew it. He knew that I'd bring the, the Metagross because it's just too strong against him. <laughs> so, for everyone who speaks German. It's probably pretty funny for him. And. Yeah. Bam! My sandstorm is slower. That is actually really good. So I'm stealth rocking. So he says, I knew it. That was so fucking obvious. Yeah. So, and. He can maybe do some damage to me. And. Now he says, okay, that's unfair. Probably because the sandstorm is slower than him. Or maybe maybe it's actually a speed tie though. That would be great. Um so what is my plan here? I'm going into 
powerless here. Rain. <laughs> okay. I I'm knocking off right now. If he swaps in his swamper, then this could be a problem, but I can still get the sand off them after that. And <laughs> now, now he sees the name, so I hope he stays in so that I can knock off his item. So maybe if he has rain dance, maybe it's like Dambrock, but I don't see that. I really don't see that actually. Brings in the Mew, so I'll knock off the Mew's item, which is really good. Choice packs, yeah, that's a way, that's good. So, he'll probably go for a psychic type move here. The problem is, if he goes for Psy Shock, that wouldn't be too great. So, I actually want to switch in this thing here. Oh, there comes the Volt Switch. So, here is the Swampert. I'm just going for the Energy Ball here because he's n he does not have his, uh, his Swift Swim right now, and that should probably knock it out. And there it is! Swampert is out of the way! So, this was what his team was built around, and this is that. <laughs> now he says he, he's going to give up, but I don't think he does that. This dust is still a problem. And oh my god, that is a rocky helmet and a half. And yeah. Let's see if he has the defog on that one he has. So that that's still okay. Because I can I could go for the Thunderbolt. I actually want to go for the knockoff. He stealth rocks. That's no big deal. So at this point I'm going for the Thunderbolt. So I just did that so that when the Nidoking comes in, his item gets knocked up as well. Here's the X is interesting. Don't know for what he did pack that though. Do I have anything that has problems with X is a? Don't know. Don't know right now. Still, he brings in the dust lobs. That is great. That is great. And this Eviolite is a way. This is this is really good. This is working out really good. And now I am bringing. In, I, I, I'm going for a Thunderbolt here. Pre pretty good switch in from him. So fight the power is coming is going to come back in. And Brick Break does not do a lot. And no, I'm going for the stealth rocks because they are great. And he still he can still spin block me though, so that's a problem. Um yeah, I, I don't see this thing doing anything to my Gudra. I still have to show off some names to him, but yeah, only... Oh, Toxic! That, that was a good play. But I got the Hydration! Ha! Huh. Ha ha! Dude, I knew you were going to bring the rain! Oh, and Poe with Mrs. Dude, Hypnosis is not gonna help you as well! Because I have the Hydration. Should I tell him? Oh my god, I miss another one. And he misses another one as well. Doesn't really matter. He could have done some good damage to me with... Uh, I mean, he could have done shit damage to me if he had like Ice Beam or something. Don't know if he has. But... Toxic and Hypnosis is of course a way. I, I think the Hypnosis is pretty good against my Metagross maybe. Uh, don't know. Yeah, yeah, so the Power Whip hits. Just do some decent damage. He has, he has Earthquake! Man, he should have gone that from from the beginning. He could have totally took me out there. But this thing is well. So I, um, I don't get the hydration back, sadly. He's probably going to bring in his physical Nidoking King right there. Right there. Mm. And I really do not see him not going for the Ice Punch. So... I'm going into my Victini. Sucker! Oh! Really nice. Really, really nice. So I have to switch out here. Do not want to take a Sucker Punch. Thunder! Oh my god, the predictions! So actually, he whittles down my Mons. I don't think he has the, the Ice Punch, which is pretty good. So I can just go for an earthquake right here. 
Or do I want to raw? I mean, getting damage off is great on anything. Yeah, Mew is probably going to take some serious damage. And if he is choice backs, he doesn't have any recovery, so I can just go for the slack off. I live anything. Yeah, that's good. And I'm at full life, and this thing is dead. So this battle is going pretty well so far. He's bringing in the dust clubs. Uh, I'm roaring. Because Nidoking King is really not doing anything to me. And I, I mean, now he saw my whole moveset, but what can he do? He sucker punched. Yeah, he, do he doesn't have the ice punch. Probably has um, earthquake or poison jab. Don't know yet. But yeah, I, I really didn't need the toxic spikes. But the rocks were pretty good for me. So and the crit ends the game. This is a good game. Didn't even have to bring the Metagross. It's it's sad though. He had like the best name. And he just left. So we got a 6-0. Um, the kill on the Swampert was pretty big. And the knockoff on the on the Dustlops as well. But he made some pretty cool predictions with Thunder Punch and with also what the the toxic was good. I mean the hydration was even better I guess. Hydration was pretty good then at the end. Really like even if he hit one of those hypnosis it wouldn't have mattered. Um don't know if he maybe didn't know that. I'm going to tell him that hydration works with all the status moves. And on the set of conditions. So, um, I hope you liked that battle. It was pretty one-sided, but I know that he didn't have the most time to build his team. So, next battle is probably going to be much harder because you know what I'm going to do. And yeah, if you liked that, give me a thumbs up. And um, next week is probably going to be no battle for me, but the week after. We are going to go right back in and we want to finish the season, of course, without a lose. So. Stay tuned for that! <laughs>